out at the, the bar uh, rod and holder and stuff, Nick, uh, let's maybe talk about these holders, where you get them, or you can make them yourself, or whatever. Yeah. Well, these rod holders, there's several different styles of rod holders. I mean, this is just one that uh, we had made. They're just homemade, and we got them done at a welding shop. They're just 5 8 3 bar, and on it is uh, a 2-inch metal tube, and it is welded on the on the bar, and you leave a couple inches above for using to pound them in, because some of these gravel bars, it's hard to get the holder in, because it's pretty heavy gravel, and you usually have to use a little ball-peen hammer or something like that to pound them in. Then you have another style. If you look at Bean's rod holder up here, they're aluminum, and uh, you can see, and it's pointed angle aluminum with a with a tube welded on it, and it's you use those usually generally just to wiggle in, because you cannot pound those with a hammer, or you will absolutely flare the top of them. But they also work very well. And of course, the height of the rod holder generally, you're better to have, at least have a three foot high rod holder to start with. So once you have it pounded in, you're at least a couple feet above the water, because that way it lifts more line out of the water, the easier to hold in the river. So you don't want the rod holder right on the bottom, eh? like really low to the water, you want it up in the air a bit. That's why you'll see these rod holders are like that. And what kind of, uh, what kind of stiff rod we got here? Well, there's all kinds of various rods, but most bar fishing rods are minimum of 10 and a half feet in length. And generally you check the pound test on the rod, it'll say on the side of the rod, it should be minimum usually 20 to 25 pound test. Uh, like it'll have a rating from 12 to 25 or from 15 to 25 or 20 to 30 or 30 to 40 and you want something that the upper pound test is at least 25 pound that means the rod is probably fairly stiff and can handle this large gear because most of the line you use on these rods if you're using monofilament it's 20 to 30 pound test and if you use a braided line I said braided line most people use 50 or 65 and uh, it's a heavy line it's a little thinner than the mono and it actually probably will hold better in the current but also when you're dealing with braided line you got to remember there's very little stretch in it and there's not much forgiveness in it when you get the fish close to shore so you've got to kind of you know weigh the the two the factors of, the, of both pros types and of lines and the pros and cons and that way you can uh, that way you can tell what you want to use it's, it's really an individual uh, thing it's uh, not everybody wants to fish exactly the same and that's where you put the bell. You put the bell, usually you hook it on the edge of your guide. You always want to put a piece of ribbon or something on it, or maybe a little piece of line with an old spin glue on it. So if you get a bite and in the excitement, you knock it off and it falls in the water, you can find it easy when you're finished. Or if it goes flying on the beach behind you, it's the same thing. You know, it's one thing to be a good fisherman, but the thing is the etiquette about fishing, Nick. Maybe we should sort of touch on that for uh Yeah, for that. just, uh, it's... Again, it's an individual thing. I mean, there are certain types of fishing where you can fish a lot closer together. When you're bar fishing, you come to a bar, you'll see rods spaced out. If there's somebody fishing there, you're going to fish below them or above them. You want to give them at least, you can see the distance between these rods, 30, 40 feet. You don't want a crowd to put another rod in here. If you're a bunch of guys together and you're friends, sure. You quite often put your rods together. When people come along, you don't know them, they don't know you. You don't crowd them and ruin their fishing so you can go fishing. You, if you come to a bar and it's too crowded, there's too many people, go somewhere else. There's lots of bars in the river. You can find them. It takes a little bit of legwork and a little bit of running around, but you can find yourself a spot. And uh, not every day everybody's going to be on certain bars. I mean, some days you'll come there and there'll be nobody there. If you're early in the morning, quite often a lot of these bars are empty first thing. Then that's when you want to come. Or if you come in the middle of the day, people are going home and their spaces open up. But you just don't want to come to the point where you're crowding out people to go fishing and spoiling their fishing too, because then it's no fun for anyone. And it'll spoil theirs too. Because if you're too close, next thing when you're casting out, there's not enough cast room, you're going to get drift down a bit and get tangled up and you got a heck of a mess. Yes, and then you have problems on the river. And also if you hook a fish, this way with the rod space that you hook a fish, people have got time below you to get their lines in before the fish runs down and gets in their line. And that's another thing with etiquette. When somebody hooks a fish above you, especially if he's immediately above you, everybody goes to the rod to wind your line and give him room to take and land his fish and throw out again because that way everybody's happy and it happens to him and it's going to happen to you one day. So, you know, everybody treats everybody else with respect and the fishing is a really, this is a really nice type of fish. And we notice below we got one, two, three, four, four boats there and I mean they're a comfortable distance away from us because if we got a big fish like you did earlier and you had to go out on the boat and you were lucky to get out if you get in too close there the, if you hook a fish you can get tangled up the anchor so the people out on the boats got to take uh, you know take a look at where they're yeah, anchoring exactly I mean that's not just 
their proximity to people on the bar of fishing above them or something, you, you're fishing down below and there's other boats anchored, you don't go and anchor immediately on top of somebody or right immediately right below them. Give them a little distance. I mean, they aren't crowding you and they were already here, so show them respect of where they're fishing. Give them some room too. And I mean, all these things are actually pretty well common sense, but people that are new to the fishery have just come out, they might not know. I mean, just ask the guy. If nothing else, pull up and ask him. Is it okay? Am I, gonna, am I too close here? Or can I fish below you a ways or whatever? And uh, in the all scheme of things, it'll turn out better for everybody.